Hello everyone, my name is Hayati. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And today we're gonna talk about quick surface um, part that we're gonna be reconstructing. And so I brought my model in and I check, make sure that it's an inch and then I check my values and everything looks good. Now let's go ahead and start our 2D sketch from the bottom plane. We're gonna pull that plane up and we're gonna create and then we're going to create our sketch. We're going to align these lines. And we're going to put some circles. And align them as close as possible. You can do auto sketch on those but it's not really a um, really clean scan. So uh, basically I'm, I'm just eyeballing it and then I can take measurements from the tool part and then make an adjustments. Once it's done, let's go ahead and get out of this one. All right, zoom out. The sketch looks nice. So click OK. Now we're going to extrude this. Let's select that. Once we extrude it, you can just drag the arrow. Try to get as close as possible. Let's see if that works. Nope, that didn't work. Let's just do bottom plane. It's gonna snap right there. Perfect. Now we'll create that. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our cylinder. I'm gonna select these areas. of this housing main uh, cylindrical shape. See how close we can get. You want to do this slowly so you don't capture stuff. And if you do, you can always go back and delete them. So I think that's pretty good. Once it's done, let circle and then create. I'm sorry. And then now you can close that. You can select the bottom, drag it. Let's run here. And then now we're going to create another cylinder. Let's see how this is going to work. And if you don't get it perfectly, that's okay because the part is uh, casted. So you have a parting line. Um, in that case, sometimes you might have some irregularity on the surface, which is normal. Probably the part is not been completely finished manufacturing process yet. So let's just go ahead and select these areas. I'm trying to select as much as area so the algorithm will be done correctly. That's pretty good. Close that. Let's just move this down a little bit. Somewhere halfway on top of that thread housing. 
Now let's go ahead and select through and create another cylinder. Pull this down, pull that down, so we're a little bit above, so we can put a pillet fillet there. And if you notice, everything I do to this mesh, uh, it's on the left side, uh, it creates the future tree. So it's really easy to transfer it over to SolidWorks. And that's pretty good. That's close as we can get. Let's just close that. We're going to select that surface. We can change the size of the selecting circle. I'm basically selecting these edges so I can create my plane. Let's create that plane. And then close. Now we're going to go ahead and sketch. You can always change the size of that plane too, just remember. 2D sketch. Move this a little bit back and create our sketch. You can do outline mesh if you need something that you need to capture it behind also. Now we're just going to create our sketches. see how this is gonna work so I can do circle see if I can get it to work mm, snapped it somewhere so I'm just gonna delete that I'll try again yeah that's nice okay so I might try to use a spline there. That didn't work. Let's go ahead and put some radiuses. Just move this up here. If you notice, they're all tangent to each other. Like one snaps, you can see if it's tangent or not. And I don't like that. I think that's a straight line. So let's go ahead and try it. Yeah. I'm going to delete that. Let's try again. Snapped it there. Yeah, I think that's a straight line. So I'm going to get rid of it. Put a straight line there. And then I'll put a fillet after another straight line there. Let's just trim that. Trim it. Trim these excessive stuff that we don't need. Once we do that, we can just extrude the part. We can slide back and forth. I'm just going to slide it up here. Now let's activate all our part. Main goal is basically capturing as much as information as possible. Then you can take it to SolidWorks and you can modify your part, add more different um, the variable fillets and the edges or you can move some of the areas that you don't want it um, you can increase the size of the, the circular shape on the housing so 
quickly I can extract my sketches um, and I can continue building my model. So let's see, all right. So we're coming to an end of our design. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to check the uh, analysis. That looks pretty good. And after that, I'm gonna put some fillets. Let's just do that. You have an option to put a chamfer also. Be careful if you do too much um, fillet in certain joint area, it actually deletes the surface. So you have to be careful. You may want to take some measurements from the sketch value and put that fillet in SolidWorks. So let's go ahead and finish these. If you notice the, the thread surface is a little bit off, which is normal. Now I'm going to export this to SolidWorks. And you can see live sketches. I'm not even touching the computer. These are all done automatically. And nothing I have a control over. Once I click go, the software just takes it and plugs it into SolidWorks with surfaces, um, fillets, and everything that you need. So it's a bridge between and two software. So I completed all the features. I transfer them over gradually and the result is great. And you can see it's almost done. And I drag this all the way down. You can see everything that part has except the threads at the end. It's completed. Now the next thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this part and save it as a step file and then bring it back in to my model in quick surface and then I can uh, analyze it. So save it as a uh, IGIS or step file. Either one of them will work. Now I can just do some analysis on it. And I can see how close I am. Overall, easy to use software. Um, we do offer training for Quick Surface, so and it's really a uh, reasonable price. Let's do analysis on it. You can see I kept it around five thousandths of an inch, which is really good for cast iron. I got it really close to a model. And you see that blue area? I think that's just because the cavity may be warped or uh, too much surface taken off. And I'm not sure. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, please contact us if you need any reverse engineering job. Thank you.